In this video, we are going to talk about the constant e. Now, we've already used the constant e, but we, do, we never formally defined it. So, the constant e is defined to be the following limit. e equals the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 plus 1 over n to the power n. So, we can use our calculator to compute this and see that it actually does come out to the right number. So, if we pull up a calculator, and we try a couple of values. So let's say 1 plus 1 divided by 1,000 to the power of 1,000, 2.7169. How about 1 plus 1 divided by a million to the power of 1 million, 2.71828, which is getting closer. Uh, let's try 1 plus 1 over, let's see whether 10 million works, to the power of 10 million. 2.718281, I think it's 7 is the next term. So this is getting closer and closer to the correct value. And if we take the limit, we end up with 2.718281828 and so on and so forth. It goes on forever, never repeats itself. It's some number. It just turns out that this is an incredibly useful number. And one of the places in finance where this shows up, as we described before, is in compound interest. So we have the following formula. The future value of some cash paid today is the present value of that cash times 1 plus r over n to the power nt, where r is our annual interest rate, and n is the number of compounding periods per year. So this is our standard formula. We've seen it before. Continuously compounded is future value equals present value e to the rt. And of course, we have present value equals future value e to the minus rt by moving the e to the rt to the other side, dividing both sides by e to the rt. So these are our formulas. These are the things that we're going to be, we need to know for finance. We need to know how to do these things. I personally, and it's a mathematical thing, have a preference for these formulas. This formula is, of course, the one that most of us are the one most of us have used before and are relatively comfortable with. Okay, I'd like to introduce one other concept here called a discount factor. Okay, the discount factor is the present value of one dollar paid at some time in the future. So the discount factor at time t, if we have compound interest, is one over one plus r over n to the power n t. Continuously compounded interest, discount factors e to the minus rt. And we can see that, right? The present value of a dollar is 1 times e to the minus rt. Right? So this is where this formula comes from. It's just the present value of a dollar. And the discount factor should always be the same, right? A dollar paid at some point in the future is always worth the same amount, no matter how we quote our interest rates. And so one of the things that happens, which is less natural when you first start working in these, working with these calculations, but is intuitively makes sense, is that the present value of a dollar or the discount factor is the same no matter how we quote the interest rate. So at the end of the day, this number should always be the same, which means that if we know the present value of a dollar, we can figure out what the continuously compounded interest rate is, as well as what the interest rate is for any compounding. Now, the other thing to note is that when you change t, the discount factor changes. So every day has a different discount factor. All right, so we're going to do some calculations. Oops, sorry. So we have a relationship now between discount factors and our present value of future value formulas, which is just that the present value equals the future value times the discount factor. All right, if the future value is $10,000, the present value is $10,000 times the present value of a dollar. So let's do some calculations. We're going to try to find out the one-year discount factor if the interest rate is 2%, where the interest rate is compounded annually, quarterly, or continuously compounded. Okay, so let's go get our calculator again. 
compounded annually, we want the discount factor. That's going to be 1 divided by 1 plus 0 0.02. 0.98039. Let's just go with five decimal places. 0 0.98039. So, answer to first. first problem is 0 0.98039. Let's make sure we got that right. Okay. And that is 1 divided by 1 plus 0 0.02. Compounded quarterly. Let's do that one. 1 divided by 1 plus 0 0.02 divided by 4 to the power 4. 0 0.980245. 0 0.980245 equals 1 divided by 1 plus 0 0.02 divided by 4 to the power 4. The last one, we're going to do 0 0.02 negative e to the x, 0 0.9801920, 0 0.98020, 0 0.98020, 0 0.98020, which is e to the minus 0 0.02. Now, there are two things to notice, right? One first thing to notice is that this is the smallest number, right? The present value of a dollar, if interest rates are 2%, the present value of a dollar is smallest if we're using continuously compounded interest rates. The second thing to notice, which is really important, is all of these numbers are close to 0.98. And if I were going to estimate the present value of a dollar, right, that the discount factor, if interest rates are 2%, I don't really care how compounding works. I know that basically I earn 2% on my money, and if I start out with $98, that's going to turn into $100. Or if I start out with $0.98, cents, it's going to turn into a dollar, because on something like a dollar, I'm going to earn 2%. That's $0.02. Cents, that's a dollar. So the present value of a dollar is about 0.98. If this were a, let's say, instead of a one-year discount factor, this were a five-year, well, I earn about two cents per year. So my guess would be the discount factor for five years is approximately 0.9, right? Two cents a year. Okay, so those are my discount factors. 0 0.98039, 0 0.98025, 0 0.98020. 0 0 Future value. How much money do you have in a year if the interest rate is 2% and you start today with $10,000? <clears> Again, same thing. Interest rates are annual, quarterly, continuously compounded. Okay, I can do this in two different ways, right? Future value, we know, is present value times 1 plus R over N to the power NT or present value divided by discount factor, right? These are the same things. We calculated our discount factor by using the second half of the formula, or one over the second half of this formula. So 10,000, version one, 10,000, go back a page, 0 0.98039. 0 0.98039 equals 10,000, divided by 0 0.98039. 10,200.02, let's do that. So 10,200.02, that's version one. Version two, 10,000 divided by 0 0.98025, I think, 0 0.025. 0 0.025, 10,000 divided by 0 0.98025, 10,201, 10,201, And the last one, 10,000 
divided by 0 0.98020 10,000 divided by 0 0.98020 10,202 10,202 that's version 3 again thing to remember to note is $10,000 the interest rate is 2% doesn't matter how you compound that interest rate but approximately you should earn 2% of $10,000, which is $200. So the future value should be approximately $10,200. All of these are approximately $10,200. Continuously compounded slightly bigger, annually compounded slightly lower, all close to $10,200. Now, one of the reasons why I do this calculation is I want to know the approximate answer. Why do I want to know the approximate answer? Because I'm good at screwing up my calculator. And if I screw up my calculation in the calculator, put the wrong numbers in, type something slightly incorrectly, and I don't end up with $10,200 approximately, then I know something's gone wrong, right? If my answer had come out to be $10,800, something's gotta be wrong, right? I'm earning something like 8% and I should be earning 2%, so I've done the calculation incorrectly. All right, present value. What's the present value of an investment in one year if you've been promised $10,000 and the interest rate is 2%? Well, present value is going to be 10,000 divided by 1 plus r over n to the nt, or 10,000 times the discount factor. 1, 2, 3. So the present value in version 1 is 10,000 times, go back, get the discount factor, 0 0.98039, 0 0.98039 is $9,803.90, present value, 10,000 times 0 0.98025, 9,802 $9,802.50, Present value is 10,000 times 0 0.98020, $9,802. Just remembered my last two discount factors. I didn't need to go back and get them. Again, when I think in terms of present values, I like discount factors because it's easy. You just multiply. I don't mind these formulas. I guess I left off one of my formulas, 10,000 e to the minus rt if we're continuously compounded. I don't mind these formulas, <clears throat> but if I'm doing calculations over and over again, often what I do is first I calculate discount factors, learn those, write them down, and then I use those discount factors to calculate present values if I'm doing lots and lots of present value calculations. If I'm just doing a one-off calculation, it doesn't really matter which way I go. Now the second thing to note is that interest rates, the 2%, are much more intuitive than the discount factor 0.98025 or whatever it turns out to be. So it's easier to think in terms of interest rates, it's easier mathematically to work with discount factors.